One of the most hyped teams going into the 21st century was a team developed from the legend himself, Dale Earnhardt. The team was known as Dale Earnhardt Incorporated, better known as DEI. Many considered this team to be the next best in the Cup Series as the talent on the team was impressive. They had Steve Park, the up-and-coming driver in the number one Pennzoil machine, Dale Earnhardt Jr., the son of the Intimidator in the number eight Budweiser, and finally Michael Waltrip, the lovable journeyman in the number 15 Napa Auto Parts machine. Many people thought that this new team would be in the Cup Series for many years to come, but by 2010, Dale Earnhardt Incorporated would be fully out of the sport. Less than 12 years of being incorporated. How did this happen? How did a team led by the Intimidator and an impressive brigade fall so quickly? Today, we will be diving into the downfall of Dale Earnhardt Incorporated. It's 2001, and Dale Earnhardt has expanded his team to a three-car operation. A lot of people call it a questionable move to add on a driver that has never won in his 16-year career. However, Dale Earnhardt sees talent in Dale Waltrip's brother. At the 2001 Daytona 500, there is more hype than ever as one of the strongest teams is DEI. They have been fortunate too, as Waltrip, Dale Earnhardt Jr., and Dale Earnhardt were able to avoid one of the biggest accidents in the race. Down by that car, and that's uh, the four car. And he got in the back of Tony Stewart. Of course, Tony Stewart won airborne here. And it was Ward Burton's car being sideways that blocked up the track for everybody behind him. Boy, and it gets hit by every car in the field, seems like, and Tony Stewart's car just took a whale of a ride. God help all of them because there's no place to go. This would be fortunate for Michael Waltrip and Dale Jr. as they were positioned in the first and second position. It would be even better because their car owner, Dale Earnhardt, is right behind them, holding off any competitor that tries to charge up to the front. On the last lap, it looked like it was clear that Michael Waltrip was going to get his first win in the NASCAR Cup Series after being unsuccessful 462 times. But as they go through turns three and four, however, an accident forms behind them. When the cameras turn to the accident, it shows the black number three machine going head first into the wall. We kept watching on the camera and this looked bad. And, and you can tell by the people around the, the, the car, even though it was in a long shot. Then the ambulance came up and then Dale was taken out and placed in the ambulance. And then we followed, watched the ambulance going to the hospital and the ambulance was traveling virtually at walking pace, which meant either a broken back or death. Michael Walter would win the Daytona 500, a first for DEI. Unfortunately, it cost him their founder, one of the greatest drivers of all time. This would not only be a heavy blow to the organization, but the sport as a whole. Dale Earnhardt was one of the most iconic drivers in history. He would go on to win seven championships and record 76 wins. To many, he was considered the best. The following week, NASCAR would have to go on to the next track on the schedule, Rockingham, with heavy hearts. Earnhardt was gone, and many people were looking to see how they could find a piece of the Intimidator. Luckily for them, they still had his team. That's going to be a photo finish. Park has the run off the high side. He clears the body, and Steve Park scores the second straight win for Earnhardt Incorporated and the second win of his career. Man, what a great finish. It's just so hard. It was catching him with one thing, passing him, as we always say. That's another. Tried harder to win a race than today. Oh, man, I, I brought tears to my eyes. Oh, oh. oh what's to say? Just, uh, I want to thank Teresa. You know, Dale's the one who taught me how to drive this place. And he told me to stay off the brakes, and we stayed off the brakes all day long and won the race. So, uh, you know, God bless the whole family. Thank God for this. He's been with us all weekend. Here they come, turn four, final lap of the Pepsi 400. Michael Walter in second, but it's going to be Dale Earnhardt Jr. using lessons learned from his father to go from sixth to first and score the victory in the Pepsi 400. That's, uh, that's unbelievable. Yes! A man behind you did it, boy. Yes. You guys celebrate. You love you, man. You did it. That was beautiful. Very, very nice. Junior, you're happy. A finish at Daytona, Dale Jr. on top of the car in the infield. The 1998 Daytona 500, when his father finally won the great American race. 
He threw the car into the grass doing victory donuts. Everybody joining in the celebration. That's Chocolate Myers. Storybook ending. Oh, this is great. The season would prove to be a special one for many, as a DEI car would win in the race that would cost Earnhardt his life, as well as the first race after his passing, and a victory from his son at Daytona International Speedway just six months after the tragic passing. The team was proving that they had the ability to carry on the legacy of Dale Earnhardt. Their biggest weapon was the power at the super speedways. If there was one thing that Earnhardt was a master of, it was the restrictor plate races. Even though he was never a fan of the style of racing, he somehow figured out how to master the craft of drafting, something that would carry on over into his team. During a span of four seasons from 2001 to 2004, DEI was able to collect 11 wins at both Talladega and Daytona. That is 70% of the restrictor plate races were won by Dale Earnhardt Incorporated. They were so impressive that Dale Earnhardt Jr. had his best shot of winning the championship in the 2004 season. Unfortunately for Dale Jr., it would be a four-letter expletive and a disaster accident at Texas Motor Speedway that would cost him an opportunity to win the championship. It seemed like that DEI was just a couple of adjustments away from winning their first championship as an organization. However, 2004 would be considered to many as the start of the downfall. Steve Parks, the driver mentioned earlier in the video, would be out of the team before the 2003 season due to poor results. Many believe that the performance issues could be traced back to this unfortunate accident in 2001 at Darlington. Back to the green. Larry Foyt on the inside is coming up and all of a sudden Steve Parks' car, the 31, just veers left. and. Wally and I have talked about it. It looks like maybe that the one of the axles broke on the car as he was hitting the accelerator and car to, and caused the car to veer. After his return from injury, he was never truly quite the same again, and it ended his career early. The team would try to have multiple drivers try to bring back the success that the number one team had before, but it would never happen, and the number one team would be forced to run on a part-time basis entering the 2004 season. This would be due to the exit of the longtime partner. Penzoil. Another blow for the team would be the loss of the grip that they once had at restrictor plate races. Jeff Gordon and Henrik Motorsports started to collect more wins than Waltrip and Dale Jr. at both Talladega and Daytona. Between 2004 to 2005, Jeff Gordon collected four wins at restrictor plate races, including the 2005 Daytona 500. In that time, DEI only won two. The unbeatable force of DEI at super speedways was no longer the case, but the biggest issue yet for DEI was the change of leadership. Teresa Earnhardt was the widow to the late Dale Earnhardt. She was the next one in line to run DEI. Unfortunately, she did not have the same relationship to the drivers that Dale had. Michael would leave the team by the end of the 2005 season in favor of starting up his own team with Bill Davis Racing. This would leave the team with only one driver from the original team in 2001, Dale Earnhardt Jr. The relationship between Teresa and Dale Earnhardt Jr. was not a good one as both sides would seem frustrated with each other on a constant basis. This made Dale Jr. question whether or not the team would be ever good enough to win a championship. Unless he acquired a majority of the team, NASCAR would soon see the son of the Intimidator race for another team. In May of 2007, after constant issues between Teresa and Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jr. decided to step away from his dad's team and sign a five-year contract with the dominant Hendrick Motorsports a month later. This was an absolute shock to fans and perhaps the biggest blow to the organization of DEI. The team would now have to start fresh as none of the drivers that raced in Earnhardt's last race would be on the team. This didn't quite mean that they were down and out. In the later part of the 2007 season, DEI was able to acquire all the assets from the now defunct Gin Racing. This meant that they would have the kid Mark Martin piloting their number 8 machine for a handful of races with Eric Amarola running the remainder races in 2008. The asset transfer also meant that the team would acquire the 0-1 team of Regan Smith, a driver who started making the starts in the Cup Series the season before. Apart from the newly acquired assets, they also would have the two-time series champion in the Bush series, Martin Trex Jr. And lastly, they had Paul Menard, a driver with talent and a lot of sponsorship backing. A team of young talents, as well as a savvy veteran, were now in the DEI camp. 
Would the 2008 season be the comeback season that DEI needed? The 2008 season would hit many rough patches for Dale Earnhardt Incorporated as no driver would score a victory with the four car team. They no longer had the merchandise backing they once had with Dale Earnhardt Jr. And sadly, this would not be the only financial struggles that they would see. The number eight team would lose the U.S. Army as their primary sponsorship to Ryan Newman and the newly formed Stuart Haas Racing Camp, which would cause Mark Martin to make the move on over to the same team that signed Dale Earnhardt Jr. Paul Menard would make the move on over to Yates Racing at the end of the 2008 season as well, meaning the team would lose another primary sponsor in Menards. Finally, the 0-1 team was disbanded at the end of the 2008 season as they performed the worst by finishing 32nd in the point standings. Dale Jr.'s statements unfortunately came true for the team. They were not a championship caliber team by any means. Now the team was just trying to stay afloat in order to compete as an operations in 2009. Sadly, we would not see that happen. In November of 2008, the announcement was made that DEI would merge with Chip Ganassi Racing, meaning that all but one of their cars would be dissolved. The same team that the seven-time legend built in the mid-90s was no longer a team less than a decade from his passing. The disappointment was at an all-time high for Earnhardt fans who wanted to see the team continue the legacy of the Intimidator. Teresa Earnhardt was not able to keep the company afloat, causing her to leave the sport shortly after. Chip Ganassi would eventually take out Earnhardt in the team name as Teresa was no longer showing up to the track on race day. The team that was founded by the man in black was gone in the sport in which he spent his whole life in. Sadly, there is no future hope of this team returning back at this time as Teresa Earnhardt has not really been seen since the 2009 season at the racetrack. To many, she is the most disliked figure in the sport of NASCAR. The only thing that comes close to DEI returning to the sport in some sort of way is his son's team making the move into the Cup Series, which is better known as JR Motorsports. Perhaps that could bring some joy to the supporters of Dale Earnhardt Incorporated. However, most of them have given up at this point. Dale Earnhardt's legacy will live on for decades to come in the sport of NASCAR. The only thing that won't live on is the team that he left behind when they were on top of the world.